G'day guys. Lots of people have been asking me to do this video and I've been so busy that I've been sort of putting it off, but I finally freed up the time to bring you a Hellbrute Masterclass. This is one of the most underappreciated units in the Chaos Space Marine Codex. So today we're gonna to talk about all of the different combos and all of the different ways that you can wield a Hellbrute in your Chaos Space Marine list to do absolutely brutal amounts of damage to your opponent and really leverage those secondary objectives and your victory points. So let's get stuck into the video, shall we? Welcome to the Black God! Alrighty, I think the best place to start is to have a quick look at the Hellbrute data sheet. This is something that a lot of people overlooked, but with Arcs of Omen, we got a few things that make it very, very powerful. So we'll talk about those in a moment, but let's start by having a look at the data sheet that we're playing with. Alrighty, so it's a three, uh, six inch movement, weapon skill ballistic skill three, strength six, toughness seven, eight wounds, five attacks, leadership eight with a three plus save. Comes equipped with a missile launcher and a twin heavy bolter, but it's got plenty of different weapon options. So it can swap its twin heavy bolter with either a Hellbrute plasma cannon, a multi melter, a Reaper auto cannon, a twin las cannon, or a Hellbrute fist. And it can swap its missile launcher with either a Hellbrute fist, a Hellbrute hammer, or a power scourge. And then it can also be equipped with one heavy flamer for each Hellbrute fist that it has. Let's have a quick look at its abilities. So it's got Let the Galaxy Burn. It's got Monstrous Resilience, which is each time an attack is allocated to the model, subtract one from the damage characteristic of the attack. It explodes, so when it dies, roll a D6 before removing it from play on a six. Each unit within three inches suffers a single model wound. And it also has this cool little rule, Fire Frenzy. Each time the model makes an attack, if it has seven or fewer wounds remaining, re-roll a wound roll of one. All right, so that's a relatively cool little thing. It's like a, you know, a little punchy kind of character. I like to run them with a multi-melter, a power fist, and a heavy flamer in the fist. And the reason that I like to do this is it makes them a bit of a Swiss army knife. It means that they can come on and they can multi-melter down tanks. It means that they can heavy flamer out infantry. And the fist is also really good at dealing with elite infantry and tanks. So it makes them a bit of a, a, a unit that can come on from strategic reserves or walk up the table and do some serious damage. But before we talk about the, you know, the various stratagem combos and things, there's two things that changed in Arcs of Omen that made the Hellbrutes really, really interesting to me. And I have ran them in every game since. The first was the free war gear, you know, or the discounted war gear. So being able to get the multi-melters and the heavy flamers for free now makes them only a 105 point investment, which is one of the cheapest unit investments you can make, you know. Outside of things like cultists, most units are around the, you know, 100 to 200 point range for Chaos Space Marines, and 105 point puts you on that real bottom end. So it means you're bringing in a unit that's gonna be able to take up space on the table, it's gonna be able to deal with enemy units, and it's relatively cheap. Now, this thing being 105 points, it's often going to punch above its weight because that multi melter is going to likely pop vehicles. The fist is going to go in and pop vehicles as well. And it's also really good into just clearing like a unit of five space marines. It'll go in with five attacks. Depending on which legion traits you get it, it's probably going to kill five space marines. So really, really interesting little, you know, cheap MSU style unit there. Uh, further to that, Arcs of Omen also made strategic reserves free. Now, this is the big one because the... Hellbrute has a relatively small movement characteristic and it does a lot of its damage up close, whether it be through melter guns trying to shoot things within 12 inches to get that D6 plus 2 damage, or whether it be through the power fist or the heavy flamer. Either way, it wants to get up like front and center and it wants to be close to your opponent, right? And strategic reserves is a great way of doing that. It means that you can put them off the table, you don't deploy them on the table, and in your second or third turn, you can bring them in from a table edge and do massive damage. If you want to know a little bit more about strategic reserves, make sure to check out my strategic reserves masterclass video where I break down all of the different ways that you can use strategic reserves to get massive amounts of value from your units. But needless to say, Hellbrutes are a perfect candidate for strategic reserves because they're able to come on, do that damage up close, and then be a unit that has traded up, it's already earned its points back, and it's nice and it's cheap and it's easy. 
One of the other things worth noting is that Helberts have the core keyword, which means that you can give them marks of chaos. Now, I would advise not giving them any marks of chaos, and that is because part of the charm of the Helbert is that it's such a cheap unit. As soon as you start layering on expensive upgrades, they lose that charm, and then all of a sudden you have to get a lot of value out of them. Whereas when you've got a 105 point Helbert, if you don't get any value out of it, and say it comes on and it misses its multi-melter shots and fails its charge and then your opponent kills it, it's like, cool, I got no value out of it, but that's okay, because it was only 105 points. You haven't invested too heavily. Whereas if you put Marks of Chaos on it and you put upgraded weapons on it, now all of a sudden you have to make sure you get that value. That being said, if you are going to put Marks on it, there's a few that I think are quite interesting. One of them is the Mark of Slanesh. Being able to always fight first is a really, really cool thing on a unit that does massive amount of damage in melee. Particularly if you've given it the Fist, that's really, really good in melee and uh, being able to always fight first is always welcome. The other one is the Mark of Zinch. Being able to turn the damage of the first failed save to zero means that your opponent's gonna have to actually commit serious damage to kill this thing. They're not gonna be able to just whiff it away with a couple of you know small shots. So that's also really, really good. And given that the Hellbrook doesn't have an invulnerable save, when your opponent goes cool, you know, they fire their LAS cannon at you and you're like, yep, cool, I'm actually just gonna turn that to zero instead of taking you know, up to six damage, means that that Hellbrew just has a whole nother life effectively. So this is a really powerful one as well. So they're the ones you would consider if you do go down that route. However, I would advise against it. The other thing that Core gives it is access to a whole bunch of different buffs. It means that all of those stratagems and relics within the game that affect friendly Core or character units, which there's a ton of, they are all very relevant on the Hellbrew. And also, for the World Eaters, this is really good because they have things that allow them to do stuff that is heavily contingent on it being core. So Hellbrew's being core means things like, for example, the pre-game move with the Lord in Cardiff. You can do that on the Hellbrews. There's a few different tricks that you can do there. We'll get into those in a moment. But yeah, worth considering that it does have a core keyword. All right, first let's talk about the different legions and which ones Hellbrutes are particularly interesting in. I like them in the Black Legion because getting that plus one to hit if you're targeting the closest enemy or in the first round of combat if you've just made a charge or that's really, really interesting on Hellbrutes because they're often coming in from strat reserves so they're gonna be able to choose which unit is the closest to them. You just put them in the right position. They get plus one to hit on their shooting attacks. Then they're often making charges from that reserves and getting plus one to hit in the combat as well. Black Legion are really, really powerful for units that do damage in both phases because they get that plus one to hit in both. Whereas things like Word Bearers, they get reroll hits in combat, but they don't get any buffs to their shooting capacity. So I do rate the Black Legion Hellbrutes. Another one that's really interesting is the Emperor's Children Hellbrutes. Now, the downside to the Emperor's Children is that they have to buy the Mark of Slanesh, which means their Hellbrutes are a lot more expensive. However, being able to come on from the tabletop edge being able to shoot your multi-melter and make sure that one of them is going to be a six to hit wound or damage roll, thanks to the Mark of Slanesh, you can use a stratagem to make it so that one of them is a six, means the probability of you coming on and just doing eight damage to something with the multi-melter is quite high. So that's really interesting. And then also being able to use Honor the Prince to make that charge from strategic reserves really, really high likely is also very interesting. So Emperor's Children have a very interesting Hellbrute build as do Black Legion, but I think the rest of the Legions may consider different options. You know, Alpha Legion have got some interesting stuff there, but generally speaking, I think those two are the ones that make the most interesting Hellbrutes. Now let's have a look at some of the stratagems Hellbrutes have access to. So you got Death to the False Emperor for one command point. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Traitorous Astartes unit from your army is selected to fight. Until the end of the phase, each time a Heretic Astartes model in that unit makes a melee attack against an Adeptus Astartes or Sanctic Astartes, you can re-roll the hit roll. All right, one CP for re-roll hits, that's pretty good because when you've got high damage, you know, melee attacks, being able to re-roll hits on those and get that extra damage is really, really good. It's less relevant on something like Black Legion or Word Bearers. Word Bearers already get it, Black Legion hitting on twos. But, you know, your other Legions, your Empress Children, when they're coming in from Strat Reserves, they're using one of the Prince to get in and then they're using this, it's very, very powerful.
All right, Fire Frenzy. Now this is my favorite one that's available exclusively to Hellbrutes. Use this stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase after an enemy unit has finished making its attack. Select one Traitor of Society's Hellbrute model from your army that was hit by one or more of the enemy's ranged attacks and which was not within engagement range of enemy units. That Hellbrute can shoot as if it were your shooting phase, but when doing so, it can only target either the closest enemy unit or an enemy unit that contains models that targeted the Hellbrute model, and only if that enemy unit is an eligible target. So this is one of the things that makes Hellbrutes really, really interesting, because you basically you come on from strat reserves, you blast some things, you do some damage, your opponent goes, oh my fucking god, there's a Hellbrute in my backfield, I need to deal with it. And then when they try to deal with it, you get to shoot them again, provided they don't kill you. And really importantly, you can either target the closest enemy unit or the unit that shot at you. And because of the Hellbrutes uh, frenzied rule or whatever it's called, they basically, after they've taken damage, they get reroll ones to wound. So now you go, okay, cool. Your opponent moves up, they shoot at you. And if they don't kill you, you get to shoot them back. If you're Black Legion and they're the closest enemy unit, you're still gonna be hitting them on twos. You're gonna be re you're probably gonna be winning them on twos with your multi melter, and then you're gonna be re-rolling ones to wound. So really, really powerful firing back at them, and it can be really, really game changing. There were several instances where my opponents moved up a character to be the closest thing to the Hellbrute, thinking that they were gonna kill it. Then they shoot at it with something to soften it up before the character goes in, and I go, "Cool, you shot at me. You didn't kill me. So now I'm gonna shoot back. I'm gonna target the closest enemy unit, which is the character, and I'm gonna be hitting it on twos." And I'm going to be wounding it on twos with reroll ones to wound with a multi melter that's going to be doing d6 plus two damage. And you would often kill the character. And now your opponent's just lined up a charge that has now got no character left. And it's really, really funny when that happens because they just don't see it coming. And this is one of the things with the Hellbrutes. They, they are a very, very powerful unit. All right, this is another interesting one. Terrifying Phenomena, one CP. Use this stratagem at the start of the morale phase. It's like one enemy unit within 12 inches of a traitorous Astartes chaos undivided unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, your opponent cannot select that unit for the insane bravery stratagem and cannot use any rule that would allow them to reroll a morale test for that unit. If that unit fails morale test, any action it is performing immediately fails. So when you've got these Hellbrutes coming on from strategic reserves, you can dig pretty deep because you come on six inches and then you've got a 12 inch range for this stratagem. So you're coming on 18 inches, which means chances are your opponent's not gonna be able to hide from you because if you come on from either of the table edges, you're gonna get 18 inches deep. So unless they're smack bang in the center of the table, chances are you're gonna be able to do this to them. And then what you can do is you bring them on and then you shoot a bunch of units, but you soften them up so that they don't die, but they took a lot of casualties. And then there's a decent chance that your opponent's going to want to spend two command points to automatically pass one of those morale checks, particularly if it's on a unit that's holding an objective or something like that, and they're hoping that it survives through into you know, their next turn so that they get that, you know, hold that objective or deny you from that objective or something like that. So they're gonna to wanna to spend those command points and you can just go, no, one CP, you cannot you know, do this. And then that unit dies to morale, and then all of a sudden you're holding that objective that previously you would have lost. So this is a really cool little toolbox piece and it's really good on the Hellbrutes specifically because often they're gonna be undivided because you're not gonna be spending points to upgrade them to be you know, Marcus Slanesh or whatever. So often they're gonna be undivided and often you're gonna be able to dictate where they are. They're all over the table. You might bring someone from this table edge, someone from that table edge. You know, So you've got a pretty big area of the table that's covered by this rule which allows you to weaponize this strategy quite effectively. All right, this is an interesting one, Hatred Unbound. It's two command points and it is locked to Black Legion only. However, you can use the stratagem in your command phase if the Black Legion Warlord is on the battlefield and your army is engaged in either Wantum Destruction, Massacre or Slaughter. Select one Black Legion core unit from your army within 18 inches of the Warlord and until the start of your next command phase, that unit is considered to be engaged in Destruction, Massacre and Slaughter. All right, so this you can't use on the turn that you arrive from strategic reserves because it's something that you activate in the command phase, which happens before rest the reserves. However, on those turns when you are going for another thing, that's really interesting on a Hellbrute because it means that that multi melter is gonna get exploding sixes to hit. And it also means when they go into combat, that fist is gonna get exploding sixes to hit. So that's a really spicy little combo that you can use on a Hellbrute. 
in certain situations. You're not going to use it every game, but it is something worth knowing in your toolkit if you are a Black Legions player. Use the strategy in your command phase. Select one Legion Heretic Astartes unit from your army, then select one Legion trait. Until the start of your next command phase, models in that unit have that Legion trait. You can only use this stratagem once. Being able to give that Hellbrute one of the various different Legion traits means that you could go Alpha Legion, you could fall back and then charge things. You could go, you know, Red Corsairs to get advanced and charge. There's a few different tricks that you can use there, and all of these are available to your Hellbrutes, which is really interesting in a Black Legion list. Unrelenting Onslaught for two command points. Again, Black Legion, this allows you to select a Black Legion unit in your movement phase, and until the start of your next movement phase, the unit can ignore any and all modifiers to its move, advance, and charge rolls, and that unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge, even if it fell back this turn. So this is something that is used in your movement phase, so you can use it on the turns that you arrive from strategic reserves, because the reserve step is part of the movement phase. So if you're going to come on from deep strike or strategic reserves and then charge through a forest or into Tau who have the ability to neg to your charge or Adeptus Custodes with their Tanglefoot Grenade, those sorts of things, you can use this stratagem and then just go in and there's nothing they can do to slow you down. Or in subsequent turns when you're falling back, if somebody goes, I'm going to tag that thing so that it can't shoot me with its multi-melter, you can go, cool, I'm actually going to fall back, shoot my multi-melter at you, then charge back into that combat or charge into a different combat. So... That's a really, really powerful stratagem. And again, unfortunately for many people, it is locked to Black Legion. All right, now we've got a word bearers one that's quite interesting, the Hexagrammatic Ward for one CP. Use this stratagem in any phase when an attack is allocated to a word bearers model from your army. The damage characteristic of that attack is changed to zero. You can only use this stratagem once unless you're playing Strike Force or Onslaught, in which case you can use it twice. So this is particularly interesting when paired with Mark of Zinch, because if you have Mark of Zinch and you have the ability to use this strategy, that means that there's two shots that can come through to you that you can turn the damage of both of them to zero before your opponent's able to do any damage, which makes the Hellbrute really, really annoying to kill and surprisingly tough for its low points investment. So this is an interesting one for your word bearers players out there. All right, a Night Lord's one here, Sound the Black Hunt for one command point. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase or the fight phase when a Night Lord's core, a Night Lord's Demonkin, or Night Lord's character unit from your army is selected to shoot or fight until the end of that phase each time the model in that unit makes an attack. If the attack targets a unit that was below its starting strength when the attacking unit was selected to shoot or fight, or it targets a unit that has a leadership characteristic of 6 or less, reroll hit rolls of 1. And if the attack targets a unit that was below half strength when the attacking unit was selected to shoot or fight, or targets a unit that has a leadership characteristic of 5 or less, you can re-roll the hit roll. So 1 CP to get re-roll, 1s to hit, provided that the target has taken some casualties, is quite interesting, especially when you're bringing on multiple Hellbrutes, because what's going to happen is the first one shoots, kills a model, and then the second one shoots, he's going to get re-roll 1s to hit. Really, really interesting little play there. It's not a massively powerful thing, but it is a little bit of incremental buff, so being able to re-roll those 1s to hit is good. And if you happen to be hitting something with particularly low leadership or something that has taken significant damage, being able to reroll all hits is very powerful. So I would generally reserve this one for situations where you are going to get reroll all hits because rerolling all hits for one CP is really good value. Next, we have underhand scheming for one command point. Use this stratagem in your charge phase. Select one Night Lord's unit from your army until the end of the phase. That unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which it fell back. So similar to the Black Legion one, being able to fall back and charge is very, very good. The Black Legion one is two command points. It allows you to fall back, shoot, and charge. This is one command point, and it just allows you to fall back and charge. So you're not going to get the multi-melter shots, but it still allows you to fall back from one unit and charge another, or fall back and then charge back in, which means you now declare to charge this turn, which means you'll get to fight first. So that's really important, because often what people will do is they'll get something in their army that has always fights first, or they'll try and you know do some various maneuvers to make it so that you're locked in combat, so that in their turn, they're going to fight first, or in your next turn, they're going to fight first. Whereas being able to fall back in your turn and then charge in means that in your turn, you get to fight first. So this kind of translates to a one command point to fight first in some situations. All right, next is we have come for you. Two command points. Use this stratagem at the start of your opponent's movement phase. Select one Night Lord's core, Night Lord's Demonkin, or Night Lord's character from your army. Until the end of your next turn, energy, enemy units within engagement range of that unit cannot fall back unless they have vehicle, titanic, or aircraft keyword. 
So this one can be absolutely game changing. And because your Hellbrits have the core keyword, you're eligible to use this on them. And basically what you can do is you can charge into your opponent. You're probably not gonna kill most things with the Hellbrute, with a single Hellbrute, because it's only got five attacks. So if there's a unit of 10 of something, you, at most you're gonna kill five of them. Um, but what you can then do is make sure that you stay engaged with them. And then in their turn, if they wanna fall back so that they can shoot your Hellbrute, you just can go two CP, no, you can't fall back. Which means the Hellbrute stays there, kills the rest of the unit in your opponent's turn. And then when you took over to your turn, it's free to go do that again. Move in, charge, shoot something, tag some infantry, and now that Hellbrute can stay alive for a very long period of time, unless your opponent has combat damage to dig it out. This is really, really important to armies like Tau or Imperial Guard, being able to have that Hellbrute run around in their backfield, do a massive amount of damage and be unshootable is really, really annoying. And uh, yeah, really, really powerful on something like Hellbrute that does decent amount of combat damage. All right, next we have an Alpha Legion stratagem, Coils of Deception, one command point. Use this stratagem in your movement phase when an Alpha Legion core unit from your army falls back. That unit is eligible to shoot in this turn even though it fell back. So again, very similar to the Black Legion strat, the Black Legion one, two CP to fall back, shoot and charge. Night Lords have fall back charge. These guys have fall back and shoot. Again, on a Hellbrute, being able to fall back and then shoot with that multi-melter is really, really annoying, especially if your opponent has characters nearby you're up close, you're able to fall back and get angles on them. Really, really situationally devastating. All right, next we have scrambled coordinates for two command points. Use this stratagem at the start of the reinforcement step of your opponent's movement phase. Select up to two Alpha Legion core units from your army that are on the battlefield. Until the end of the phase, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of any of those selected units. So this is quite interesting when you are playing that reserves versus reserves matchup where you can go, cool, I'm gonna bring on my two Hellbrute units. Then your opponent goes into their turn and they're gonna bring on their unit. And you can go, cool, those two Hellbrute units that just came on are gonna have a 12 inch aura around them where you can't arrive from strategic reserves. That can be absolutely devastating to your opponent's game plan. All right, Emperor's Children time. Honor the Prince, which we discussed earlier, but let's recap. Use this stratagem in your movement phase or your charge phase after selecting an Emperor's Children Core or Emperor's Children Demonkin to advance or declare a charge. If used in your movement phase, do not make an advance roll for that unit. Instead, add six inches to the move characteristic for models in that unit. If used in your charge phase, do not roll 2d6 for that unit's charge roll. Instead, until the end of the phase, roll d6 plus six for that unit's charge roll. So again, this is really, really good when you are coming in from strategic reserves because you're going nine inches away from your opponent and then you're able to go D6 plus six, which means on a three plus you make it into that melee, which is really, really cool. Also, the advanced one is nice because you have various ways of getting advanced and charge on core units. So being able to go, cool, I move six inches, then I advance an automatic six inches, then I'm gonna charge and I'm gonna charge D6 plus six inches means you've got an 18 plus D6 inch threat range in melee, which is pretty freaking big for something that looks so unassuming. You're like, oh, the Hellbrit over there, he's got a six inch move, he's not a threat. And then next minute he's moving 18 inches plus D6 into combat, really, really surprising. And those sorts of situations where you're able to get way more value out of a unit than people would expect is one of the ways that you can often win games. All right, next we have Incessant Disdain for one command point. Use this stratagem in the heroic intervention step of your opponent's charge phase. Select one Emperor's Children core, Emperor's Children Demonkin, or Emperor's Children character unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, if that unit is not a character, it is eligible to perform a heroic intervention as if it were a character unit. And if it is a character, it can do so at six inches, five inch vertically. So this is really interesting. Being able to heroically intervene with a Hellbrute means that if you put a Hellbrute on the center of an objective because of its base size, your opponent will not be able to touch that objective without entering heroic intervention range. So if you go, cool, I've got my Emperor's Children Hellbrute. He's in, in my turn. He comes on from strategic reserves. He uses Honor the Prince to make it into combat and charges somebody and punches them off of an objective. He uses his consolidation move to end on the center of that objective. And then in your opponent's turn, if they want to reclaim that objective, they have to kill the Hellbrute. They can't just tow in on it with an objective secured model and hope to steal it out of underneath you because you can just go, oh, cool, you put a unit of five you know, Marines on there. Well, I'm actually now going to heroically intervene into those Marines and I'm going to punch the shit out of them. And that can be a real big problem for them. So yeah, quite interesting little trick there that you can use with an Emperor's Children Hellbrute.
All right, next we have Combat Elixirs for two command points. Use this stratagem when an Emperor's Children Corps or Emperor's Children Character Unit from your army is selected to fight. Until the end of the phase, add one to the strength characteristic of models in that unit and improve its weapon skill characteristic by one. So this is pretty spicy on a Hellbrute because now he's going in with higher strength so he's more likely to wound and he's getting plus weapon skills so he's more likely to hit. So this is kind of like, in some situations, getting plus one to hit and plus one to wound for two CP, which can be devastating on something with attacks that are of the high strength and damage characteristic of the Hellbrute Fist. Also really interesting if you take it on a Power Scourge Hellbrute, although I would generally recommend taking the Fist over the Power Scourge. All right, we have Secure the Prize for Red Corsairs. Use this stratagem in any phase when a Red Corsairs core unit from your army that is within range of an objective market is selected as the target of an attack. Until the end of the phase, each time an attack with a damage characteristic of one is allocated to a model in that unit, add one to armor saving throws made against that attack. All right, so this is particularly interesting because the Hellbrutes have an inbuilt neg one damage. So if somebody's hitting you with two damage attacks, you go, okay, cool, well, I'm gonna reduce the damage of that attack to one, and then I'm gonna use this stratagem to get plus one to my saving throws against that attack. So against a lot of units out there, they're going to be hitting you with two damage things and getting straight through your armor. But against the Hellbrute, you're actually going, well, no, not only am I going to halve your amount of damage because you're a two damage attack on a halve to one, I'm also going to get plus one of my saving throws, which means I'm more likely to be getting a save against your attacks. So it can be quite a significant swing and it can make Red Corsair's Hellbrutes way more dangerous than the other legions. All right, next we have some creations of bile stratagems, monstrous visages for one CP. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when a creations of bile core, or creations of bile demonkin, or creations of bile character unit from your army is selected as the target of an attack. Until the end of this phase, each time an attack is made against that unit, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. So making those Hellbrutes in combat neg one to hit and neg one damage means that they're actually very tough and a lot of units are gonna to struggle to put them down without serious commitment which is exactly what you want on a very cheap unit. Creations of Bile don't have to have any of the Marks of Chaos, so you go, cool, he's just a 105 point little unit, but he's very hard to kill because he's neg one to hit, neg one damage. That's really annoying. And your opponent can't just throw in a unit of whatever to kill you. They actually have to throw in serious combat damage. And then next we have the Auto Stimulants for one command point. Use the stratagem in the start of your command phase, select one Creations of Bile core unit from your army, and until the end of the phase, that unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which it advanced. So not quite as good as the Emperor's Children Slanesh ones with their advance and charge with Honor the Prince, but still being able to go, cool, I'm gonna go six inches plus D6 for my advance, plus two D6 for my charge, means that you're going to be moving an average of about 17 inches with your threat range. So that's quite powerful as well, and being able to just launch those little missiles out from various places is very powerful. So that covers all of the stratagems that you can generally use in the Chaos Space Marines Codex with Hellbrutes. Now let's have a look at the World Eaters and what they can do. All right, so the first thing worth noting with the World Eaters is that the Lord Invocatus has a aura where he basically gets to pick two units and himself and pre-game move them, provided those units have the core keyword. So this is one of the things that Hellbrutes have that make them really good is that core keyword. It unlocks a lot of synergies with units. Now, there's generally speaking going to be better options for this. You may want to do it with your eight bound or something like that. However, there will be some situations where that eight bound pre-game move isn't going to achieve you what you want. Maybe your opponent goes first, and as a result, you're not going to be able to get that turn one charge, and exposing your 8-bound is just going to result in them dying. So pre-game moving your 8-bound may not necessarily be the best play. I generally recommend what you do is you take two units of either a Hellbrute or a Contemptor Dreadnought, because they have a similar synergy, but for the purposes of this video, we're talking about Hellbrutes. Take two Hellbrutes and two units of 8-bound, and your Lord Invocatus. You put him in the middle, and then basically, if you go first, you launch your 8-bound out, and then you charge something and you ape out a hidden out of line of sight. So if you go second, they're fine. You put your two Hellbrutes in the middle so that they're exposed. And if you go first, you pregame move the ape bound. But if you go second, you pregame move the Hellbrutes out of line of sight to where they're safe. So now if you go second, everything's hidden, everything's safe. And if you go first, you've deployed aggressively with your Hellbrutes and you're able to pregame move with your ape bound. So that's one way that you can use this and it's unlocked thanks to the core keyword on the Hellbrutes. All right, one of the stratagems available to World Leaders Hellbrutes is Gory Dismemberment for one command point. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a World Leaders core or character unit from your army is selected to fight. 
Till the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. Maximum of six mortal wounds can be inflicted each time this stratagem is used. Now, given that the Hellbrutes don't have a massive number of attacks, this is not necessarily that interesting. However, if there is something that you just absolutely need to kill it and you are in combat with your Hellbrute and he is striking, one CP to be able to potentially do a few mortal wounds in addition to your damage is not a bad idea. So it's situational and there's generally speaking probably gonna be better units to use this on. However, if you are in combat, this is an option that you can use on a Hellbrute. Scorn of Sorcery. So for one command point, use this stratagem in your opponent's psychic phase after a psychic test has been passed for an enemy psychic unit and after any deny the witch attempts have been made, if any. If that enemy psychic unit is within 12, 24 inches of a World Eaters unit from your army, roll a d6 and on a 4+, plus, that power is denied. Alright, so this one's really, really cool. In the Chaos Space Marine Codex, you would have to spend command, uh, you'd have to spend points to make it a Corn Hellbrute in order to give it the mark of corn, in order to gain access to their version of this stratagem. You don't have to do that for world leaders. So knowing that your Hellbrutes can come on from strategic reserves, create those big 24 inch aura bubbles, means that you're gonna have a very good chance of being able to deny your opponent's psychic powers. All right, Blood Frenzy, one slash two command points. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when an enemy unit is selected to fight. Select one world leader's core unit from your army that is within engagement range of that enemy unit. Until that enemy unit's attacks have been resolved, each time a model that is selected is destroyed by a melee attack. If that model has not fought this phase, do not remove it from play. The model can fight after that enemy unit's attacks have been resolved and is then removed from play. If selected World Eaters unit is a troops unit, it costs one CP, otherwise it costs two CP. So you've essentially got a two CP fight on death ability with your Hellbrute, which is really, really cool because he hits pretty hard, particularly in World Eaters because he has that additional strength and attack. So your opponent charges into him and it's like, cool, they killed him, but he's going to fight on death, which means if they charge him with a character or something squishy, he's going to pop him. And if they charge him with a vehicle, he's probably going to pop the vehicle too, which means, yes, it's a two CP investment, but being able to trade up with your Hellbrutes is really, really spicy. Aggressive intervention for one command point. Use this stratagem in the heroic intervention step of your opponent's charge phase. Select one world leader's core unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, that unit is eligible to perform heroic intervention as if it were a character unit and is eligible to perform a heroic intervention if it is within six inches horizontally and five inches vertically of enemy unit. When performing heroic intervention, that unit can move each model in that unit up to six inches. All other rules for heroic interventions still apply. So being able to spend one command point to heroically intervene six inches with that Hellbrute is really, really spicy. I really like the World Eaters Hellbrutes for this reason. Being able to heroically intervene with them means you're able to get onto objectives, means you're able to bully people off of objectives very easily, and it means that you're gonna spend more of the game in combat with your opponent than other legions would. Even throughout the normal Chaos Space Ring book, they don't have much in the way of heroic intervention tricks. World Eaters love it. World Eaters are all about getting into combat, and this is a really good way of doing it with your Hellbrutes. All right, that rounds out the stratagems available to your World Eaters Hellbrutes. However, there is one more thing, and that is synergies with Angron, because he gives out various buffs to core units. So let's look at what core buffs you can get from Angron onto your Hellbrutes. He has Lord of the Arena in your command phase, select one friendly World Eaters core or World Eaters character unit within six inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. All right, so re-roll hit rolls on a Hellbrute is pretty cool. There's a decent chance that you're going to be using this on another unit. However, it is worth noting that it can be used on a Hellbrute. So yes, you're gonna be using it on eight bound, or yes, you're gonna be using it on your Berserkers, but sometimes those things are going to be whittled down, they're going to be out of range, they're going to be somewhere where they're not going to be doing massive amounts of damage, but the Hellbrute may be positioned better. And knowing that you can put this on the Hellbrute is really, really relevant. All right, then we have his Wrathful Presence. So at the start, in your command phase, select one of the following abilities. This model has that ability to start your next command phase. So this is something you use on Angron. But you've got Infectious Rage. While friendly World Leader's core units within six inches add one to the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. Or you can, and this is limited to core, or you can use um, Glorious Bloodletting while another, uh, while another friendly World Leader's unit is within six inches of the model, each time it makes an attack, it can reroll the hit roll of one. Or you can use Righteous, righteous Slaughter while enemy units uh, within six inches of the model, they cannot fall back. 
main one here is the one that gives you plus one attack, which is limited to core units. Now, this is something where the uh, you know, Exalted 8 Bound are not going to gain access to it. There's various other army units within the Codex that don't have core that will not gain access. However, your Hellbrutes will. And getting plus one attack from that, potentially with plus one attack from the, you know, the um, Legion trait, with also potentially plus attacks from a Power Scourge if you have them, you can get a Hellbrute up to an absolutely ungodly number of attacks. And then being able to use the blood type points to go, oh, cool, they're all hitting on twos as well, you know, or they're getting exploding sixes, or, you know, the various other ways that you can buff up the Hellbrit, you can make it into an absolute melee monster. And being at such a cheap unit, they're actually really, really powerful and really, really effective at dealing those that damage. The other thing worth noting with the World Eaters Hellbrit is they're a cheap unit and they're a vehicle. And at the end of any phase, if a vehicle was destroyed, you get an additional blood type point on top of those generated from just units being destroyed. They also can bring a multi-melter so they can actually deal damage to enemy vehicles in their phase. So this means that in your turn, you can come on, you can pop a tank with your multi-melter and generate two blood type points. Then in your opponent's turn, when they kill that Hellbrute, you pop and you generate another two blood type points. Unfortunately, well, these blood... Um, World Eaters Hellbrutes don't have the ability to shoot back on when they're targeted. They don't have the Fire Frenzy stratagem, which in my opinion, of all of the things that we've listed, that's one of the most fun and exciting things about the Hellbrute. That being said, they do have the ability to fight on death. They do have the ability to heroically intervene. They do have the ability to get all kinds of buffs from the Lord Invocatus, from Angron, all kinds of crazy stuff. So World Eaters Hellbrutes are definitely very interesting, and I think that there's something that should be looked at when writing a World Eaters list. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to check out blogfortheblood.god.com. We've got all of the information you need to know about how you can show support for the channel over there. We've got our Discord server there. We've got access to our Patreon. We've got the apparel like the shirt that I'm wearing now. You can get neoprene objective markers. You can get custom Blog for the Blood God dice. There's all kinds of merchandise available over on blogfortheblood.god.com. So make sure to check that out. Thanks for tuning in guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Of the Black God. The Warhammer community suffers from some of the most prohibitively expensive essentials in the world, especially Australian content creators. Every single day, Dean wants to create content, but he can't. Suffering from old, worn-out brushes, expensive model kits, and costly software and equipment, he can't endure much longer. Just look at this dirty paint water. Would you drink this? Would you let your child? Even a small monthly donation can help provide Dean with clean paint water, basic tools for survival, and access to life-saving information and education. So please, follow the links in the description below and find out how you can sponsor a mad cunt like Dean today and end the suffering. Suffering that is cruel, unsustainable, and your fault.